Lieutenant, come in. Boy, it's quite a building. This all yours? Pray so. Must be a lot of business for your kind of company these well, days. We can't handle it all. Sit down. Uh, listen, uh, your secretary calls. She said you wanted to see the files on the case, so I thought it'd be a lot safer if I brought them over myself. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Uh, wasn't necessary, but uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, want some coffee? No, no thanks. Thank you. Uh, those are the duplicates. Okay. Mm. Yes, this will help. A lot of it. I wonder if you can give me a little rundown. Well, it's just what I told Mr. Kinnicott. No leads. Except, you know, I was looking through that stuff last night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it drives my wife crazy, you know, because we have the lamp right next to the bed and the poor thing, she can't sleep. Did you find anything? No, not really. Well, uh, take the, the autopsy report. Yes, here it is. You see, now, that jive with something that I noticed about the body the first time I saw it, and that bothered me. You see, Mrs. Kinnicutt was struck on the left cheek, and she had a bruise, and she had a weird kind of cut. Um, do you see what I mean? Um, no, I don't think so. Well, let's start with the cut, because that's what bothered me. I said to myself, now, what in the world could have caused that kind of cut? Uh... Does this lighter work? Yeah, I think so. Uh... Uh, where, where was I? About the cut. Oh, yes. What could have caused the cut? I said to myself, it could be a ring. A ring of... You mean a, a finger ring, this kind of ring? Yeah, something like that. Now, here's the way I figured it. Suppose you were going to strike somebody. And suppose it was a woman. Now, do you punch her? Well, maybe. But more than likely, you hit with your open hand, either this way or this way. Oh. Now, if you hit this way, then the ring is not going to cause any cut. So I figured it was a backhand blow like this. Okay? Yeah. Well, I still don't follow you too well, because that would... Uh... I would put it over. But I use my right hand. Yeah. You see, and if the ring was on the right hand, then the bruise would be on the right cheek. But it was on the left cheek, so the murderer was left-handed. Struck her like this. Which means the murderer is left-handed. Well, that's interesting. That's provided, of course, that all these uh, speculations are valid. Yeah, I would say that we have a left-handed murderer and, uh, and an unpremeditated crime. We have? Oh, I think so, yes. I mean, I don't think a man kills with his hands unless he's angry. As a matter of fact, you know, maybe you didn't mean to do it. Could be. You know, maybe it was an accident. You know, I got a feeling that when we find our friend, it's going to turn out that he has a terrible temper. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. I certainly wish I had your crystal ball, Lieutenant. Why don't you let me digest this material, and then we'll talk again. Okay. All right, fine. Sure. Listen, I want to thank you for the time. Listen, thank you. All right. Oh, listen, before I forget the... She wish. I didn't want to forget that, but, uh... Let's see, I had a receipt here that I wanted you to sign. Well, listen, let's just make one up. Uh, it's a receipt for the files. Isn't that weird? What a coincidence. What's that? Here a moment ago, we were talking about left-handed people, and you're left-handed. And right-handed. I'm ambidextrous. That means I don't favor either hand, particularly. It's a character trait shared by about 10% of the world's population. 10%? No kidding. Anything else? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Uh, oh, 
Listen, this is a little bit off the subject. My sister-in-law, she wants to buy a place out at the beach. How do you like it out there? Who told you I was living out at the beach? I know. I, I noticed your car out in front of Mr. Kennecock's. You know, you parked it there in the driveway, and as I was walking by, I saw that the chrome was tarnished. You know what the salt air does to it. It just eats the life out of it. Yeah, that part's a problem, all right. Uh, you're a very observant man, Lieutenant. That's not what my wife says, sir. <laughs> well, you tell your sister-in-law that she will love it at the beach. She doesn't mind that uh, problem with the salt air on the chrome. I'll give her that message, and thanks again. Thank you. Oh, well, uh, say, have you ever been to Mr. Kennecott's house? Yes, I met you there. No, I didn't mean the big house. I meant out at the beach. I was just wondering, because your beach house and his beach house, they're fairly close, aren't No. They? It's a couple of miles. That close? Isn't that a coincidence? <laughs> I'll tell you, this case is just full of them. Just one more thing. 